Good morning. Good morning. We got six cases this morning. Most of these are the first hearings. Hopefully we can get some of the people plugged in with you. I've yet to turn the recording on. We are on the live feed. I guess I'll turn the record on. But from everything I understand from the news, uh, President Biden is going to allow the CDC stay to expire tomorrow, July 31st. Mm -hmm. um, unlike many jurisdictions, we are providing rental assistance. I mentioned my friend in California that he has to get any money. We've given away hundreds of thousands of dollars or maybe even millions so far here in Cass and St. Joe County to assist people with their delinquent rent, both the tenants and the landlords. And I appreciate the efforts of Keystone Place for making that happen. So I don't expect things are gonna change much for us. We'll continue to do the original seven day adjournment. We'll continue the non-payment of rent cases for 30 days to give Keystone an opportunity to work with the people to try to get the rent paid. I don't see some mass set of evictions here in St. Joe County. My do fear is that we may have a number of landlords trying to terminate tenancy for just cause or otherwise, but our non-payment of rent cases are gonna go pretty much as they have since the pandemic hit. So I've got a couple of customers here. I'll bring them in. And uh, I'm sure glad you guys are there to help people. There's not much available rental housing here in St. Joe County. Yes. <clears throat> or anywhere else for that matter. Good morning, Mr. Reagans. Can you hear me? Mr. Reagans, can you hear me? Good morning, sir. Good morning. Legal Aid has filed an appearance for the defendant in your case, and sure. we're going to be addressing that here in a few moments. Uh, our, we've got our nine AM cases, Elm Tree Apartments and Julie McCann. Julie McCann is present. Our 910 case is River Trail Apartments and Salinas. No one is here on that one yet. Then Mr. Reagan's yours, I think, is 915. We've right. got Brent Wagner and the Strassers at 920, I believe. Uh, Arver and Shaddix at 930. And Perez and Ballou at 9.50. So we're still bringing people in. I'll let you all know we are live on YouTube. We're on the Zoom platform. And we are recording this, as we always have. Here's another customer, Galaxy A10. Let's see if we can determine who this is. If we were in a regular courtroom setting, you would all have an opportunity to uh, sit in the gallery and watch the case ahead of yours, which is why I do like to bring the other people in so they can see the cases that are preceding theirs. Uh, Mr. Tyrone Fleeman has just joined us from Tyrone Fleeman World Headquarters. Uh, on the Elm Tree Apartments case. Ms. McCann, could you unmute your mic? Mr. Reagans, I'll let you know we're in, pretend like we're in a courtroom so you don't drink or smoke or eat while we're uh, doing a court proceeding. It is certainly less formal than it used to be, but we're going to address your case in a moment. Ms. McCann, can you hear me? Yes, I can, sir. All right. Um, this is entitled Elm Tree Apartments versus Julie McCann. It is a non-payment of rent case. Rent is $311 per month, which is quite low for our market. I guess low for anybody's market. 
Mr. Tyrone Fleeman is here on behalf of the complex, and I believe the manager is here also listed as Galaxy A10. Um, you're the only defendant I've got here uh, at this point, but I'm going to advise you of your rights as a tenant in a landlord-tenant proceeding. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. As a defendant in a landlord-tenant proceeding, including non-payment of rent, which is what this is, you have the right to obtain counsel for representation in this matter. If you cannot afford an attorney, a legal aid attorney may be available to help you. And I think we already sent you that information. You have the right to a trial by a jury or by the court. If the action is for non-payment of rent, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, in our case, it's Keystone Place, or other federal program may be able to assist you with payment of some of the rent. Defendants do not need a judgment to receive assistance. Summons and complaints are sufficient. Right. I've already contacted Keystone. Let, let, me, let me finish. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. I'm pleased that you have. If the plaintiff is agreeable, the Citizen Mediation Services, Inc. may be available as a possible source of case resolution. If the parties are interested, the court can facilitate that. If you reach an agreement with the plaintiff and a consent judgment is entered by the court, you would have the following additional rights. The judgment may not be enforced until three business days have passed. You may move to set aside the judgment within those three days if you misunderstood what you consented to or what you were waiving. Your motion to set aside the judgment will be set for a landlord-tenant hearing. However, if the judge does not find in your favor, the original judgment would stand. Now, Zatina Emery is here from Keystone Place, and uh, this is a matter of non-payment of rent. We've now ticked the clock into another month of August. Mr. Fleeman, what's the current arrearage? Your Honor, I just realized I had not added August to this. Um, the current arrearage is... Um, $1,614.52. And, and then $172.42. and $75. Is one seventy two eighty? Oh, it's one seventy two eighty. Sorry, I didn't add that eighty cents on side of that. Plus one six one six one four point five two. One seven eight seven thirty two. Yes, sir. That's what I got to. Now, Miss McCann, you have been in contact with Keystone. Yes. Yes, sir. Bettina, can you tell us anything about this yet? We are currently in the process of completing the application with uh, Ms. McCann. Very good. I indicated before we went on the record with everybody that the federal CDC stay, I believe, is going to expire tomorrow. Many states are doing a very poor job of allocating the federal money to help landlords and tenants. I'm proud of what we're doing here in Michigan and what we're doing here in St. Joe County. We've helped dozens or hundreds of people get their rent paid through the efforts of Keystone. The law, Mr. Fleeman, as I understand it, still requires me to adjourn this for 30 days to allow the defendant to do the rental application process for emergency assistance. So let's pick a date. Problem is, I'm going to a wedding out of state at the end of August. So we're looking at what would be the first day you would be back in Let's September. Say, then we've got uh, Labor Day. So I'm going the 27th and the 30th of August. Uh, the first date I would have would be September 3rd. So 
phase out, but. Uh, that's the, the Friday before the holiday, right? Uh, it's what? The sixth, I think. I think that's what that yeah, is. Yeah, it's the Friday before Labor Day. What are you looking like the week after that? The week after Labor Day. All right, let's go down one. Uh, probably looking good. That's all the way out to September 13th. Uh, I'm good. Uh, yeah, Your Honor, likewise, my schedule is wide open from the 7th to the about the 13th. So, so any date in there that we're... So is, is the 3rd acceptable to you? The fr oh, the, you mean before the holiday? Yeah, Friday, September 3rd. I think I might be traveling. I, I, I think I might be traveling that day myself. All right. So well, if we could go to the 7th or later, that'd be great. All right. Let's look. All right. Uh, Monday... September 13th. That would work. All right, let's look at a time. Yeah. Uh, 1.15. Now, Miss McCann. Yes, sir. If you work with Keystone and they are agreeable to paying uh, all or a portion of your rent, then... Um, they can enter an order of conditional dismissal. We need not even have the hearing. Okay. If for some reason you're not eligible, the other problem is this kicks us all the way into September, which yeah. is regrettable, but we'll just go with the numbers we have right now. Um, so it's important you stay in contact with your landlord and with Keystone okay. to complete that application. Uh, if the matter is settled, we'll do a conditional order of dismissal. If it is not settled, uh, we'll have a hearing on September 13th at 1.15. Okay. Do you have any questions? No, I do not. All right. You still do have the right to get counsel if you wish, but let's see if we can get your rent paid. Yeah, I want to get my rent paid. Thanks. All right. All right. Anything else on that, Mr. Fleeman? Um, no, nothing further on that. Just uh, wanted to say to, to Ms. Emery that uh, uh, Judge is, is right. Everything I've heard suggests that Michigan's agencies like Keystone have been so much better at uh, distributing the SARA funding that the CDC declaration really isn't that big of a deal to us, that it's expiring really doesn't matter that much because of this procedure that the, the judge does where it puts out 30 days. And so, so you know, uh, d d just a, a hats off to, to you and, and all that do this stuff because we apparently are doing better than the rest of the country. <laughs> That's good to hear. Yeah. All right, Ms. McCann, you're free to go. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Have a good weekend. Thank you, Tyrone. See you again. All right. We've got uh, Mr. Soltis has joined us, and we have a telephone number that might be Ms. Salinas. Um, uh, I've got someone that's joined us here, 269-797-486. Who am I speaking with? Good morning. Who am I speaking with? I'm so sorry, Judge. Did you say 279-7486? Yes. This is Betty Callahan, property manager at River Trail Apartments. Okay. You still haven't figured out how to do the video, but we'll get you in here. That's Thank River you. Trail. Ms. Salinas is not here. Uh, Mr. Soltis is. It is uh, 9 11. This matter is set for 9 10. This is file 21 1105, River Trail Apartments versus Erica Salinas. This is filed as a non payment of rent. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Callahan, as far as you know, is Ms. Salinas still there? Yes, she is. Uh, 
All right. Mr. Soltis, we have service by attachment, so I can't do a default. Certainly. So I'm going to set it for a second hearing seven days from today. Or a date that works for you. Let's take a look. August can be a vacation time. We've also got a judicial conference. Uh, Ten days from to, or seven days from today would be next Friday, the sixth. Um, does that work for you, Mr. Soltis? Uh, yes, it does, Your Honor. Uh, how about, um, oh boy, this is the day they set one, two, three, four, five, six rent-a-center cases for 15 minutes. This is going to be a horrific afternoon. We're going to get backed up right off the bat. How about if we set this for 145 for August 6th? Is that acceptable? Very good, Your Honor. All right, we'll continue this for some days. She'll either appear or she won't. If she does appear, we'll address the issues. If she does not appear, we'll, she'll be subject to a default. Um, all right, we didn't accomplish too much, but we did do what we need to do to move the case to the next step. All right, uh, anything else we need to do? Not from our end, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Have a good now, weekend. we did that in one minute, which didn't entail you driving all the way from Portage to Centerville. Uh, I think we're going to still be on the Zoom platform for landlord-tenant going forward. But uh, that was just so much easier for an out-of-town council like you. All right, Ms. Callahan, uh, we'll try this again next Friday at 145. Thank you, Judge. Thank, Thank you, Your Honor. All right, let me. All right, now I've got Whitney Haroon and Legal Aid are here on Mr. Reagan's case. Good morning. Rebecca Johnson has joined us from Legal Aid. Whitney Haroon is. Uh, Join us. All right, now I've also got someone else who's here by telephone. Let's see who this is. Miss Haroon, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, who am I speaking with? <clears throat> Russell Strasser. All right, Mr. Strasser, thank you for joining us. Ms. Wagner is here. <coughs> I'm sorry about the cough, Your Honor. Yeah, well, you have COVID. <coughs> All right, Mr. Strasser, for now, I'm going to put you in the waiting room. Don't go away. We'll bring you back in shortly. Ms. Haroon, can you unmute your microphone? Hopefully. Okay, I think I got it. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I can hear you. Can you do the video? Um, I'm trying to figure out how to work this thing. Okay. Let's see. All right, this is, there we go. This is file 21959LT. Mr. Tony Reagans is the plaintiff in this case and he is present by a Zoom connection. Whitney Haroon did not appear for our original hearing. Oh, she arrived late. Um, yeah. We had the hearing and I'm not sure you came in like a half an hour late. 
and I advise you that the matter had been continued until July 30th uh, for further hearing. You contacted Legal Aid and Rebecca Johnson has filed an appearance on your behalf and filed a motion to dismiss. At the original hearing that you weren't present at, uh, Mr. Reagan testified that he inherited this house from his grandparents, that you are living there with no lease. He wants you to move, and I think he wants to sell the house. So he filed a motion to terminate the tenancy. He did it in pro per. Um, they set out to sell it for him, to help him sell it. Me and my great friend, Robert Curtis. All right, well, just a minute. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, then there was a question of whether you actually had been served or not, but Mr. Reagan's indicated you had been personally served and then eventually you did show up, but you were late. The original notice to quit <clears throat> was filed on June 6th, 2021, indicating you should move by July 6th of 2021. Um, if the complaint to recover possession of property didn't check any box, just said he wanted you to move. Um, Ms. Johnson has filed a motion to dismiss in part because of pleadings with your defects with your pleadings. Um, Ms. Johnson, what's your position here? And thank you for coming in for this defendant. You're welcome, Your Honor. We would state everything that's stated in the motion of the filing hasn't been done properly. So it gives no reason for the defendant, Ms. Haroon, to be able to put up a defense or understand what's being asked. Today is the first time I am being told that the home is meant to be either sold or moved into, and that this is a termination for those reasons. I would ask that this case be dismissed and restarted, or we would allow for an amended complaint to be filed so that this can be dealt with properly according to court rules. Mr. Reagans, you did this yourself and um, you didn't quite do it correctly. I'm reluctant to make you dismiss and start all over again. Then you got to pay a new filing fee. Ms. Johnson's got to file a new appearance. Whitney's got to get back in. But let's see if we can agree on certain parameters. Uh, they are living at this house that you own at 1206 Third Street. Is that correct? That's correct. And it's a house that you inherited from your grandmother. That's correct. Is there a lease? There's no lease with, with the tenant. Robert Curtis is paying the rent at the, at the residence. There's been a couple of domestic problems between the two. He's the sole so person the rent, so. So are, are Robert <laughs> Curtis and Whitney Haroon both living there? Yes, they are. And when was the rent last paid? It was paid yesterday. And would have that been for the month of July or the month of August? For the month of August already. Thank you. July and August. She doesn't pay rent at all. I work with them. To help him pay rent. I mean, all right, stop, stop, stop. We're at, in the courtroom. Rent paid through August. So you're attempting to evict just Miss Haroon, not Mr. Curtis. Is that correct? Correct. That's what the paperwork says. But didn't you tell me that you wanted to sell this house? Yes, I want to sell the house. To Mr. Curtis? No. It's been, it's well, going gonna, to be. I'm going to have to get all your tenants out if you wish to sell it. That's correct. All right. I'm going to give you. Before 14. you make the judgment, yes. before you make the judgment on me, the, the, we're diffusing the situation between the two people who are in the house. Police come in there, 
people destroying the cameras that were put up to secure the house. And that was a neighbor. The people, the people next door, where Miss Haroon was at at a particular time. All right, well, I, I don't, I don't need to know this at this point. So that's and why so Miss Haroon, don't stop. Yes. But you didn't do it right. You didn't check any box or give her any advice on why you want to kick her out. You I'm don't stop. have a lease. Stop. You don't have a lease. The rent is paid. She's there apparently under the consent and blessing of Robert Curtis. And you're evicting her and not him. And uh, you haven't alleged that she's violated any of the terms of the lease. Um, like breaking windows or barking dogs or drug delivery or that sort of thing that people have just cause termination reasons. You simply said, I want you to move, but you didn't give her any reason for it. And she also appears to be there under the consent of Robert Curtis. Now you tell me you wish to sell the house, but that's disingenuous if you're just evicting her or leaving him there. In order to sell the house, you may have to evict both of them. Um, and so Legal Aid has asked me to just dismiss this. Robert but, Curtis been with me to file the motion to do all this with, with uh, me. So and Robert what, Curtis agrees with you? Yes. Fine. We were having a dispute, yes. But we... All right. Our this room, you admit it, you admit it. Stop. Um... Ms. Haroon, you've got a lawyer that can speak on your behalf, and her recommendation is you don't say anything. Let her speak for you. Okay. And Tony, um, I'll just note Robert Curtis agreed with this motion. And Your Honor, I'm without proofs of that. I'm without any knowledge of this due to the insufficiencies and deficiencies in the pleadings. Your yes. client I tell you that. All right. She's withholding information. All right. Tony, stop. Uh, if there were a lawyer here, they wouldn't just blurt things out like that. You're representing yourself and you're doing the best you can, but you didn't do it right. The easiest thing for me to do would be just dismiss it, make you start over again. But then you've got to pay another filing fee, another service fee. Rebecca Johnson's got to file a new appearance. Whitney's got to reconnect. So I'm going to grant 14 days for the plaintiff to file an amended termination of tenancy complaint. And then defendant has 14 days to respond. Stupid. I talk to you four times. Then I'm going to set this for further hearing. Sitting in the front room now. For September 10th at 945. I apologize for the long delay, but I'm going to a wedding in Utah, which takes a Friday and Monday at the end of August, and then there's Labor Day. So um, my advice, Mr. Reagans, you may consider discussing this with an attorney. My advice for you, Ms. Haroon, is that you start looking for another place to live, because eventually he's going to prevail. You don't have a lease. He owns the house. Either he wants you out or he wants to sell it. So at some point, if he does this right, he should be able to get his property back. But Ms. Johnson is very good at landlord-tenant law. All the legal aid attorneys are and uh, is aware of the defenses. And so I'm pleased that she's here to assist you. 
uh, but I'm going to continue this until September 10th. Mr. Reagan, you have 14 days to file an amended complaint listing the reasons why you wish to terminate her tenancy. Um, and then legal aid will respond to that. And then we'll have a hearing on September 10th. Ms. Johnson, anything else to add? Uh, nothing further, Your Honor. Mr. Reagan, you will be getting a copy of the answer in the mail from us as well. So you'll have our address to send paperwork to. Uh, I believe Mr. Reagan's is actually in Alabama, but uh, we'll continue to send everything to the mailing address we've been using, which is the River Road address. Okay. Is that acceptable, Mr. Reagan's? It's acceptable. I drove back from Mississippi last night. I'm in town. Okay. I, will be going to, I will be in the courthouse in 15 minutes to put in the quit to get out of my property. I've talked right. to the room. Slow that. down. I don't want you to give me a 15 minute answer. I want you to give some thought to this and perhaps look at what the actual law says. You're right now, you're just throwing spaghetti at the wall and see if it'll stick. So give some thought. Don't just rush over here and file something. You've got 14 days to do it. Um, try to understand what it is you're doing. But eventually, you should be able to get the relief you're asking for, which is to get your property back. All right, 14 days, 14 days, next hearing, September 10th at 945. Mr. Reagans, you're good to go. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Haroon, stay in contact with Legal Aid. And thank you for showing up on time today. You're welcome, Your Honor. Ms. Johnson, we'll see you again next thank time. Thank you, Your Honor. Always appreciate your help. All right, let's bring Russell Strasser in. He is ill, and I do appreciate the fact that he is here. <clears throat> Mr. Strasser, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Thank you for being here. Rather than uh, adjourn this matter, I asked you to call that and indicated that you're ill, but I said you can just call in by telephone. I'm going to advise you of your rights and set this for a second hearing. Brenda yes, Wagner is here. And um, Cassandra Strasser is not here. No, she could not get off work today, especially with me being out of work for the next two weeks. All right. I just started a new job two months ago. <coughs> All right, Mr. Strasser. As a defendant in a landlord tenant proceeding, including a land contract forfeiture, which is what this is, you have the following legal rights. You have the right to obtain counsel for representation in this matter. If you cannot afford an attorney, a legal aid attorney may be available to help you. You have a right to a trial by a jury or by the court. If the action is for non-payment of rent, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, in our case, that's Keystone Place, or other federal program may be able to assist you with payment of some or all of the rent. Defendants do not need a judgment to receive assistance from Keystone. Summons and complaint are sufficient, and you've already received that. <coughs> if the plaintiff is agreeable, the citizen mediation services may be available as a possible source of case resolution. And we can set that up. If you do reach an agreement and a consent judgment is entered by the court, you will waive the rights listed above but have the following additional rights. The judgment may not be enforced until three business days have passed. You may move to set aside this judgment within those three days if you misunderstood what you consented to or what you were waiving. Your motion to set aside the judgment would be set for a landlord tenant hearing. However, if the judge does not find in your favor, the original judgment will stand. 
The core rules require that I advise you of that, but I need to also advise you that Keystone does not provide emergency housing funding for land contract cases. It's only for rental cases. So there is no federal emergency money that I'm aware of for a land contract. However, you do have the right to a council and you have the right to have this matter adjourned. I wanted to do the first hearing to just get this matter moving. Now, the law says in a land contract case, if you've paid more than 50% of the contract price, you have 180 days to redeem it. If you paid less than 50%, you have 90 days to redeem it. So, uh, Miss Wagner is alleging that you're about $4,500 in arrears. Um, there may also be issues of taxes and insurance. Uh, Ms. Strasser, well, Mr. Strasser, are you and Cassandra both there? No, sir. She's at work today. No, does she, <laughs> she still could not. live there? Oh, yes, sir. Sorry. So you're, you're both still there? Yes, myself, my wife, and our child, yes. All right. Because you have COVID, I'm going to adjourn this a couple of weeks here. Uh, the next hearing will also be by Zoom. Um, Ms. Wagner? Yes. Um, you've done this pro per, and he's doing this pro per, so you're both at a bit of a disadvantage. Today is July 30th. I'm going to continue this to August 16th at 2 o'clock. Mr. Will it Strasser, be the same number? I'm sorry. Same, it'll be the same number. I would like you to try to log in visually. You're also free to come to the court, but I don't want you to come to the court if you're carrying the coronavirus. Um, well, I start the, the medication today, so I should be okay by then. All right. Well, we can do it by Zoom once again. Now, do you wish to stay there or do you wish to move? Um. The forty-five hundred dollars that I'm behind, I you know I don't have the resources to catch that up at this point, and I'm not trying to make this harder on Miss Wagner. I'm really not. Well, you're going to get ninety days to catch it up. Ninety days from August sixteenth. The law requires that I set a first hearing where I advise you of your rights and adjourn at least seven days. I'm adjourning this. 17 days because of your illness. So uh, it isn't like there's going to be an immediate rid of eviction. But if you and Miss Wagner just agree at some point in the next 90 days that you just move and sign the property back over, that's up to you. But when I see you on August 16th, I want your wife also to be present or she's subject to a default. Um, She'll be here. Yeah. All right. <coughs> uh, well, We'll discuss what the arrearage is at that time and set the hearing date for the uh, the date for the forfeiture of the contract 90 days out. Ms. Wagner, are there also issues regarding taxes and insurance? Yes. Yes, uh, I have paid uh, 2017, 2018, 2019, and part of 2020 taxes, uh, totaling $4,778.26. All right, so that's substantial. So obviously she wants to get this, either you pay it or get you out of the property. Right now she's losing money hand over fist to make sure the property doesn't get sold at a tax sale. So, uh, Let's see what we accomplish August 16th at 2 p.m. Uh, I will see all of you then, including Cassandra. Does anybody yes, have any questions? No. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Right. No, sir. I'll see you at that time. Mr. Strasser, thank you. I didn't want to adjourn this. I wanted to communicate. <coughs> And I apologize that I dragged you in here on the phone, but uh, we managed to accomplish what we needed to do. And you start your medication and take care of yourself. I'll see you. Thank on you, sir. Virtually. All right, Miss Wagner. Thank you. Thank you so much, Your Honor. All right, Bettina. That brings us to our 920 case, 930 case. Um, nobody's here. Thomas Arver versus Charles Shaddix. Do you have any knowledge of that one? It's yes, I do. Okay. Um, Charles has been approved for rental assistance. How much? 3,600 for back rent and 1,200 for future rent. Well, that's good for Mr. and Mrs. Arver and it's good for him, $4,800 worth of rent. Okay. Um, that's probably why no one is here. Um, The problem we're going to deal with is when this program, the problem isn't now when the CDC stay expires. The problem is when the federal emergency money expires. I don't think the government can continue to just pay people's rent in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. But in the short term, uh, this gets us through August, probably through September um, but then, then the dominoes are going to start to fall. Um, but as we've said many times, every time someone's removed from a pr premises, there's somebody waiting to get in. So I'm going to just show no one appeared. I expect order of dismissal. I tickle this 14 days. Very good. All right, so we've got Luke Knopfinger on our next case, which isn't set till 950. It's a non-payment of rent. It's entitled uh, D Perez Properties versus Baloo. Do you have any knowledge of that one? I did have communication um, over email with Mr. Ballou, um, but after several attempts of trying to contact him, he was unresponsive. So this application got denied. Well, here's a phone number. Let's see who this is. Good morning. This is Judge Middleton. Who am I speaking with? Uh, this is Tom and Jane Arbor. Oh, Mr. Arbor, you're late to the party. Your hearing was set at 930. Um, well, we have apologize for that we're having trouble trying to trying to get on the zoom all right well if you're going to be a plaintiff you should probably get better at it but uh bettina from keystone advised us that they've allocated three hundred six thirty six hundred dollars for back rent and twelve hundred dollars for future rent for mr shaddix have you received that payment no not yet they just approved it just yesterday, yesterday. All right. Well, I've uh, tickled this for 14 days. Uh, to get payment. 
Once the payment comes, you can find a file motion of dismissal. Okay. Uh, but that should arrive within the next 14 days. Okay. Now, Bettina, this would pay the rent through September. Um, one moment, let me pull up the document. I'll pay through November, up to December. I believe this yeah. will cover up until October. All right. And then um, he could reapply if he is still in need of assistance. All right, I call that a win-win. All right, I'm sure the check will be there within the next two weeks, hopefully sooner than that. So Mr. Arbor, if you get the check, you can simply file a motion to dismiss. If you don't get the check, we can have a further hearing, um, but uh, I trust Keystone uh, and their representations. Yeah, we tried to cancel the meeting yesterday knowing that the check was coming, but they told us to go ahead with the meeting. So that's why we're here. All right, well, I'm glad you're here. I'm sorry you're a little late, but we at least completed our record here. Um, right. I'll all right, guys. let's hope that comes through. And uh, we have to set these all on a short time frame. Once upon a time, as you recall, we used to set all the landlord tenant cases at 115 and we just do them one by one. Now they're set at about 10 minute inter intervals, uh, 9, 9, 10, 9, 20, 9, 30. And so when we call the 9, 30 case, we just call it. And if the people are here, we move on to the next one. So you logged in at 9, 41. Anyway, you're here. We made the record. He did not show up, but I think he just expects his rent is going to be paid. So uh, if you get the check, submit a, a more of dismissal and uh, we'll be good. If you don't, we'll have a further hearing. All right, okay. thank you. Okay. okay, thank you. All right, bye. All right, now we've got to let the clock tick a little bit for Mr. Knopfsinger and the loop. I was watching the news a couple of days ago and um, our governor had um, said we're getting like 380 million for housing mm -hmm. support. Well, they've allocated billions, mm -hmm. um, but many, I, I saw on the news, New York has yet to cut one check. No one's received any money. I mentioned my friend in California, his, uh, he's yet to receive anything since from April. And I don't believe he's ever received anything either. And some of it isn't the funding Sarah sources like you, it's just the county. He said in San Bernardino County, he puts it in a box and it sits there for a month before it even gets accepted as filing. Um, as you know, if somebody files something here today, it gets filed today. So people are doing not as well as we are in a lot of jurisdictions. We've also, I won't say mastered, but we've at least got the Zoom system up and running where we can continue to do our landlord tenant cases really for more than a year now by probably last May or June. Uh, we were doing everything by Zoom and uh, the landlord tenant cases that the, the lawyers certainly like it. As you saw, Mr. Fleeman and Mr. Soltis were able to do this remotely when, in five minutes. In the old days, they had to drive all the way here and back. The tenants are getting better at it. Now, the arbors should be, get better at it. They're landlords and they should figure Zoom out and and eventually they will. So we'll continue to do this. But then when we had to get through the bumps in the uh, emergency funding system, when we started that last summer, we had a couple meetings. I remember I attended a meeting from my house, from my deck while I was on vacation. We got that all up and running. We spent all of the money we had assisting people. 
Now we got more money. So I don't know how it works everywhere else, but it's at least working to help both landlords and tenants. And as yeah. Mr. Fleming said, credit to you guys. Um, so this one, there are actually three Baloo's listed as defendants. James Baloo, Kylie Baloo, and Brianna Baloo. The person that reached out to you was James Baloo? Yes, Your Honor. The Supreme Court is encouraging us to do as many things virtually as possible. Some court rules came out which seem to even mandate it. The other question is whether things will continue to be done on YouTube. I choose to do my court proceedings on YouTube under the theory that we should be transparent and open and I don't have anything I want to hide from the public. Everything I do, I'm willing to have people see it. Um, they're encouraging us to do that, but not mandating it. I'm not sure how judges across the state are going to do with that. We have our judge conference later in August. I'm sure that's going to be a big topic of discussion. But right now, it's just business as usual. I'll continue to do Zoom. I'll continue to operate on a YouTube platform and continue to try to take care of our business. We are, this is more than you want to know, but we are scheduling jury trials starting September 15th. It's our intentions to do those. You can't do those remotely, so we're going to have live jury trials. We've scheduled cases. I've scheduled all the way from September 15th to November 10th. We're going to try to work on our jury case backlog. So my hope is by the first of the year, we will be up to speed on everything. We are up to speed on everything but jury trials. We're going to start doing preliminary examinations live and in person. In fact, we okay. already have. Hopefully, Luke's not caught in circuit areas now. I know there was a... Good morning. Good morning, Luke. Your client is attempting to log in. Is there some... There we go. Hey, Amanda. All right, you're here on behalf of D. Perez Properties, LLC. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, this is 950, in this case is set for 950. It's entitled D. Perez Properties versus James Ballou, Kylie Ballou, and Brianna Ballou. Mr. Luke Nofsinger is here on behalf of the plaintiffs. Amanda, the manager for Perez Properties, LLC, is present. Also present with us is Patina Emery from Keystone. Before we logged in here on the case officially, I asked Patina if she had any background on this. Patina, could you tell us again what you know for Mr. Uh, Nofsinger's knowledge? Yes. Um, Mr. Blue 
applied for rental assistance on June 5th. And um, we made several attempts to get a hold of him. And on July 2nd, his application was denied because he was unresponsive. Ms. Amanda, is he, are they still there? Uh, yes, sir, he is still living there. Are the others still there? The Kylie and Brianna, those are his minor daughters that he would, um, he states that he would get them, you know, on the weekend basis or just kind of on a whenever basis. So I'm not 100% about the daughter's activities, but we do know he's there. All right, Luke, we do have personal service. He's subject to default. Yeah, and I, um, yeah. The other parties are only seven and nine, but they're listed as defendants, and I don't have personal service on them. My preference would be to, con here he is now, wish people would stop showing up late. Good morning, Mr. Ballou. Can you hear me? Yes, not can you? I was having a hard time with that. I called them, figure out how to do it. All right. Well, you're late. The time yeah, to figure I'm... out to do it is not the exact moment that we do it. I make this I'm as convenient as I can. I don't make you drive over here, but we started this, and now we got to back up and start over again a little bit. Uh, I've been you're... trying for an hour for an hour to get onto it. I couldn't. I don't know how to read or anything. I got. Mental. All right. Well, you're here. I'm glad. I'm. I'm glad you're here. Yep. Uh, Luke Nossinger is the plaintiff uh, attorney for your landlord. You're there with your minor daughters. Patina from Keystone tells us that you started the process for emergency financial housing assistance, and then you never followed up on it, and they well, denied uh, your I, application. Yeah, and I and I and uh. I've dragged up. I've called them back again, and um, the, so I have my friend, my my uh, friends that helped me uh, fill it out again, and and uh, they've called and talked to her. I guess. And All right. Well, let's find out a couple things. Luke, what's the current arrearage? Yeah, and I did email, um, and I can share it with the court. Um, the total arrearage at this point is $2,460.20 in rent. Through there, when? Um, that is through this month. And then- right, well, Let's that, add August. Yeah, August would be due on Sunday of 850. The water bill is $272.10. And there is a fifty dollar late fee. All right, let's add all that up. Two four six zero plus eight fifty for August plus two seventy for utilities, ten cents plus fifty dollar late is three thousand six thirty oh one. That can't be right. Two hundred and seventy-two dollars for the water bill. I gotta start all over again. Two four six zero point two one plus eight fifty plus two seventy-two point one zero plus fifty equals two six or three thousand 
62331. Mr. Ballou, the law yes. requires to advise you of your rights as a tenant in a landlord tenant proceeding. So give me just a moment. Find it. And I do, I do, I do start a job on the ninth. All right. Well, I strongly encourage you to contact Keystone. Yes, yes. I um, um so my uh, my aunt we used to work for me and she said that before they'd even do something, I had to come through this court date, I guess. I don't know. I'm all right. Well, you're here. I'm gonna tell you a couple things that you need to know here. I got paper ready to write it down, so all right. <clears throat> Place my advice of rights. <clears throat> There's only so many places it can be. It doesn't belong. Deborah, we're just finishing our last landlord tenant matter that would be done. The defendant was a little late and then the court lost something. Sure. Uh, but I never heard back from Melissa. So we'll do the best we can here. All right. Uh, this is uh, 211077 D Perez Properties versus James Ballou. Mr. Ballou, I need to advise you of this. As a defendant on a landlord tenant proceeding, including non payment of rent, termination of tenancy, or land contract forfeiture, you have the following legal rights. This is very important. You have the right to obtain counsel for representation in this matter. If you cannot afford an attorney, a legal aid attorney may be available to help you. You have the right to a trial by a jury or by the court. The action is for non-payment of rent. The Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, in our case, that's Keystone, may be available to help you with paying some or all of the rent. You do not need a judgment to receive assistance. Summons and complaint are sufficient. If the plaintiff is agreeable, the Citizen Mediation Services, Inc. may be available as a possible source of case resolution. If the parties are interested, the court can facilitate that. If you do reach an agreement with the plaintiff and a consent judgment is entered by the court, you will waive the rights listed above but have the following additional rights. The judgment may not be enforced until three business days have passed. You may move to set aside this judgment within those three days if you misunderstood what you consented to or what you were waiving. Your motion to set aside the judgment would be set for a landlord tenant hearing the judge does not find in your favor, the original judgment would stand. All right, now, Bettina is here and they started the process of getting you some emergency financial assistance. I have no reason to believe you won't be eligible, but you gotta follow through on the process. The law requires that yes, I- Yes, I see. I'm... Just a minute. No, no. The law requires that I continue this for 30 days in a non-payment of rent case to allow 
um, Keystone to see if they can provide financial assistance. Uh, oh, very good. Here's Melissa. Um, this was less crucial when the COVID stay was in place because um, you couldn't do an eviction anyway until the 31st of, of July if the defendant had asked for a CDC stay of eviction. That's about to elapse or lapse. But Luke, my understanding of the law is it still requires a 30 day second hearing and non-payment of rent cases. Yeah. We've got further complications in that I'm going to Utah for a wedding at the end of August and it takes a Friday and a Monday and then we have Labor Day. So we're pinched on our dates and uh, I'm gone the 27th and 30th of August. Um, I think we can set this for September 3rd. Uh, at 2 p.m. Does that work for you? Yes. Yes. Two, two, um. Luke, does no. that work? Yes. All right. Now, Mr. Ballou, it's very important that you follow through with Keystone Place. Yes, uh, yes. Um. I'm my my ex wife's helping me do it. I like I said I can't read or anything. I'm not really good at it. I got like a second grade reading level, so and so I don't know how to like read or write, so it's real hard for me too. So well, they'll certainly accommodate you. You know how to get a hold of them. But the yeah, is that this is a win win. If we can get your rent paid and get your landlord paid, everyone is better off. Otherwise, yeah, you're yeah, subject yeah. to being evicted. Yeah, then I don't have to leave my house. <laughs> my house, you know. So, all I'm right. New, you can start my new job. You, the all right. Where's Where's your new job? I'm gonna work for um um, Andy Guest for Guest Tree Service. That's some dangerous work. All yeah, right, September third at two p.m. You contact Keystone. Okay. I'll, all I'll, right. I'll, what, before September 3rd? Oh, yeah. Contact them today or yeah, certainly gonna on them. Monday. I'm going to call them today right, right after I have a phone with you. All right. Very good. Yep. All right. Anything further, Luke? No, nothing at this point. Um, I guess I don't think that. Well, we'll leave it at that. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Um, he got removed before his own. Uh, Miss Amanda, we'll see. Hopefully, Keystone can get your principal paid some rent. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, Melissa, I really appreciate your joining us. Um, yeah. <clears throat> no problem. We had. Sheriff's Office, Deputy Nimi. Okay. Hello, Deputy Nimi. Could I, this is Judge Middleton. Could I see Stanley Myers the second down at the Polycom room? Sure thing. All right. Bettina, thanks for your help. Thank you. All right. We'll stop that. All right. Anyway, we learned yesterday Keith kind of got dressed down by MIDC. Routinely, Judge Patterson has been having the public defender appear on behalf of defendants in bench warrant arraignments with the contract defenders rather than drag the defender in here on very short notice. I've been trying to do that. I've been asking you before, you and Jordan and Tim and the other defenders, if they can appear on a short term. Uh, notice hearing on probation viol or bond violations. These are bond violations, failure to appear generally. So we have to work on that, but our instructions are 
that we need the principal attorney in these type of cases. We're, we understand, like I said, anyway, thank you for being here. We'll work on this. Now, in this particular case, Mr. Myers has a bunch of other problems. Um, he has three cases, two of which belong to you, which I'm simply going to reset for an attorney pretrial date. Um, he's wanted in LaGrange County. He's got new felony warrants here. So he's going to be seen by the magistrate later today, but I'm going to go to Wade Boss funeral here in a little bit. So I want to get out of here by uh, 1030 or so. So thank you for accommodating us. You're welcome. <clears throat> Turn the record back on. Melissa, do you know what time your attorney pretrials are on August 20? They're almost always at 10. All right. <laughs> Paid off the magistrate. I'd rather. Well, we split them up. Uh, uh, somehow TJ ends up being first, then Tim George is nine, and I can't do it. But uh, I am told that LaGrange County let him go by mistake. And <laughs> they said, wait a minute, we want him back. And the magistrate said, well, no, he's here now. So I'm not sure what's going to happen regarding that. But I'll look at his Indiana, my case, but my last notes were on May 14th. And this, just to be sure, because this is not on the docket dispo, but 21-1404 FY. That's what we're here for today. No, we're here on 21-677 and 678. And I don't even one, have those. The misdemeanor. Oh, Are they ticket mystic, stuff only? That he would. I don't know. I, I, yeah. I gave you those case numbers. There's also an ordinance one that you don't have. But these are two traffic matters that he failed to appear for attorney pre-trial. So I have that Melissa represented him in the felony one too, and he didn't show for PC. Yeah, he's, he's got other problems. He's got old felonies, new felonies, is wanted in Indiana. We're just going to get these cases on track. Okay. Free trials. I didn't have me as his attorney in felony, so I'll have to look. Well, that maybe that's co not correct. What's well, it's okay that you just told me that case number is 211404FY. It could be that you just told me, hey, I have him in the misdemeanors and he's in Indiana. I guess I didn't, I didn't look at the case report. Well, that may be the one he's going to get counsel appointed and set a pre exam, but Mark, the magistrate's going to see him on later. Now, let me see. Now it says Melissa's been appointed on it. What's the okay. date? We so he was one. August tenth would be the PEC date then, if it's mine. All right. Yeah, that's where um, that is. It was originally set for. Oh, this is weird. So in the felony file, we have the notice of hearing for the twenty one dash six seven seven ST. That's interesting. And those were pre-trials yeah. that you missed for these. I have no idea why there's a felony case number attached to it. Here is the jail. Uh, I've had the mm -hmm. record on. We're live on YouTube. Let's bring him in. Uh, good morning, Mr. Myers. Can you hear me? Yeah. This is Judge Middleton. I've asked your lawyer, Melissa Halleck, to join us, and Attorney Deborah Davis from the prosecutor's office is also here. You've got a couple of misdemeanor traffic matters we need to deal with. 
You've also got some felony cases the magistrate is going to see you on later this morning. In file 21677, you're charged with violation of a restricted license. In 678, you're charged with unlawful use of a registration plate. In file 21965, you're charged with no valid operator's license. <clears throat> And in all of those, you failed to appear uh, in a bench warrant issued for your arrest. The bonds is $400 in the driving suspended charge, $400 in the unlawful plate charge, and $250 in the no operator's license. I'm going to also appoint Melissa Halleck to represent you in the ordinance case of no ops. I'm going to set all of these for August 20th at 10 o'clock for an attorney pretrial. You also have a felony, I think methamphetamine charge you're going to be arraigned on and Ms. Halleck is going to be appointed to represent you on that. And I believe the pre-exam will be August 10th. So you're also wanted, there's some sort of hold on you from LaGrange County, according to the magistrate. So I'm going to leave these bonds right where they are for the time being. If you don't post bond, I have to set a PR bond on these misdemeanors after 28 days. Uh, this hearing will be within 28 days. So I wanted to get these cases back on track. I appreciate your lawyer joining us on very short notice as well as the prosecutor. So all three of your traffic matters, uh, violation of a restricted license and unlawful plate from March 31 and your no valid ops from May 8th are all set for August 20th at 10 a.m. with Melissa Halleck as your attorney. She'll be meeting with you before that on these felony cases, and it's possible these cases could be resolved sooner than that. But as far as these misdemeanor cases are concerned, your bond is $400 in each of the earlier incidents and $250 in the second incident. But as I indicated, I don't think you can bond anyway because there's a hold from LaGrange County. So that's our next hearing. Your lawyer will be in contact with you after she gets this appointment on a felony case. Perhaps we can resolve everything all at once as some sort of package resolution. All right. Ms. Halleck, anything else we should put on the record here? No, Your Honor. Ms. Davis? No, Your Honor. All right. Your lawyer will be in contact with you at the jail, Mr. Myers. Uh, you're good to go. Thank you. Uh, thank you. All right, the magistrate will see him. Thank you both for helping me here on short notice. We got that case moved on to the next stage. Melissa, I wasn't sure if you had status conferences or a hearing in the family court, but thank you. Well, we're going to keep doing this until we work out some sort of agreement, if it is possible, for Keith to appear on the contract defender cases. He, Jeremy never did appear if someone was retained, but in Judge Pattison's court, he'd routinely been appearing on uh, these bond violations where there was counsel. I had one yesterday. I arraigned her. I simply set up for an attorney pretrial with the original counsel, T.J. Reed, but we were told that was improper, um, but not very, I guess. All right, you guys... Uh, have a good day. I'm going to go to this funeral, and then I think I may go mow my lawn. Okay, I'll see you all on Monday. Thanks. All right. Tell the family. Have a good Sorry weekend. Sorry to hear about Wade. Yep. I can't get over there, but I feel well, bad. Well, we heard what we heard yesterday, yeah. so hopefully you got something. His, well, you heard what I heard, so good luck yeah, with that. His granddaughter, Haley, works at the show, and she's my, my girl, so I... Shell here. Yeah, so I feel bad. I saw her working yesterday. I'm sure she's off today for this, but it's not something you really want to 